What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be focusing on a black stain and polyurethane finish on a tabletop, but more importantly, we will be focusing on how to get a flawless finish with that combo on the tabletop. So I'll be walking you through the process and giving you every single tip I know at this point on how to get a perfect finish. And with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things first, this is a red oak tabletop. If this tabletop looks familiar, that is because this is the tabletop that I made in the last video and put the breadboards on in the previous video. So this will be the final video in that series. It is worth mentioning that oak will take stain quite a bit better than a lot of other wood species which is one of the reasons I chose to use oak for this tabletop. And speaking of the stain, we're just using Minwax True Black Stain. The first thing that you can notice is that this stain is not stirred up well at all. So a very important step to begin with, you need to stir up the stain to ensure that it is thoroughly mixed. If you noticed in the opening shot, I flipped this tabletop over and that's because we are staining the underside of this tabletop first. The main reason for that is that we can use the underside of the tabletop as a practice surface to see how the wood takes the stain, what the stain looks like, what color it is, how easy it is to work with, and how well it blends in case we do go against the grain, which is something we don't want to do, which I will explain here in a minute. So at this point, we are literally just putting the stain on the table. And you can see that I'm going in different spots, different directions with different patterns. That's something that you don't wanna do, but for the demonstration of this video, that's what you can see me doing. And I will explain why you don't wanna do this, but more importantly, pay attention to how sloppy this looks. For when we flip this over here in a minute and do the actual top surface, you'll see how much differently I do it when I'm trying to do it on the surface that will show. Now you can see in this shot that I am staining with the grain, but underneath that you can see that I went against the grain. And as I go over top of that with the grain, if you look closely, you can see that it does show through a little bit. So that is one thing you want to avoid and that's why I'm doing this on the underside. You always wanna go with the grain whenever you're staining. If you don't, you can see the marks that I'm pointing out here, how I went sideways or against the grain. And if you do not smooth those out or blend those before the stain dries, then you're gonna be able to see that when everything is finished up. And that will result in a look that you do not want. So when you flip the tabletop over, you want to avoid getting any type of fingerprints on the top. So I like to put some paper towels between my gloves and the surface, and then we can begin staining the actual top surface, which will be the show surface of this piece. So you'll hear me emphasize several times in this video that you always want to go with the grain. But another thing you can notice here is that I am staining the distance of the entire tabletop all the way across the entire midsection in one even swipe. You don't want to stop halfway through and go a different direction or go somewhere else rather than you are. Once you're there, continue that full swipe all the way down the full length of the tabletop, at least until you get up against the breadboard, if your tabletop has breadboards on them. Also, as far as time goes, you want to do this somewhat quickly, not so fast that you feel out of control or like you're being rushed. But once you do get started on this, you want to finish the staining process all at once. Don't stain half of it and then go make dinner or coffee or something and come back and try to finish the tabletop later. But anyways, after I have the midsection stained, you will see that I go ahead and stain the breadboard in the direction of the grain on the breadboard. Then I overlap the middle, go back and get the breadboard in the direction of the breadboard once more. And then also equally important, do not forget to get those sides. So at this point, we have the entire tabletop completely stained. And if we were to stop here, here is a closer look at what the result would be. So you can see that there are several blemishes or smudge marks where I either had too much stain or maybe some excess drips from the rag left behind. So the final step and arguably the most important step of the stain process, at least for this first coat, is that we are going to go back over the entire surface and eliminate any smudge marks or excess stain that we have. So you don't need to put any more stain on the towel or the rag that you're using. 
You are just going over the surface one last time, once again, with the direction of the grain to smooth all that stain out and make sure that you have a nice surface for when this first coat is left to dry. Here is a close up look at the stain on the main part and you can see that that looks so much better than it originally did a couple minutes ago. On the breadboards, however, you can see that the stain was pulled across in the opposite direction of the grain. So we will go back over these breadboards in the opposite direction and I shouldn't have started in the middle there, but it looks like I do go ahead and go back across the entire length of the breadboard so that works out in the end. Now in this shot, you're gonna see me mess up here in just a second where I stop my hand halfway through and readjust the position of my hand, which will end up leaving a smudge right in the middle of that smooth stain transition. So if you do that, you unfortunately will need to go back and stain over that in one smooth pass, just like I did here. And once you have all the surfaces wiped off, you wanna back away from this table and let it dry without any interference whatsoever. So this is two days later. And you can see that some of the stain on the edge did wipe off on my gloves, so this is not completely dry, which is okay because with this being black stain, I like to go back over and stain the entire top, just like we did with the first coat earlier. Now, if you're not using black stain and you're just using a regular stain, you don't have to do this, but I've found that whenever using black stain, this will give you the best result because sometimes that black stain just isn't jet black. Or quite dark enough as I like it to be. So you can see the huge difference between the second coat and the first coat. Obviously that second coat is still wet, so that's a little bit of a reason for the darker collar, but this makes a drastic difference in the appearance of the black collar after everything is completely finished. If it wasn't obvious, here is the reason that you want to use gloves unless you enjoy washing stain off your hands, which is not something that I enjoy, but that decision can be left up to you. Here's a look at the stain after it is dry. I believe this is either four or five days later, and I like to let the black stain especially dry as long as possible before you move on to the polyurethane coat. I think the can on Minwax says something like four hours, but that is completely false. If that black stain is not dry, the polyurethane will pull that stain right back out and you'll be left with a discolored top in certain places. So you have to let the stain dry, I would say at least four or five days before you even think about touching it with the polyurethane. So anyway, moving on to the polyurethane, I'm just using Minwax oil-based polyurethane, and I like to pull a polyurethane up with a syringe rather than dump it out from the can. You obviously don't have to do this, of course. It's just a way that I've found it easier to measure out the amount of polyurethane that I need to use. Also, it keeps you from getting polyurethane all over the lip of the can. Then the can lid doesn't reseal and the polyurethane dries in the can, which is always great. But anyways, I'm using a foam brush to brush this on. So after you get the polyurethane either poured or put on the tabletop, the first thing you want to do is just spread it all over the tabletop. You're not being too picky about making sure that there's no lines or edges on this. Try to go with the grain again, of course, but really at this point, we're just trying to make sure that we have adequate coverage across the entire tabletop with that polyurethane. So the order of the surfaces as well as this entire process is actually pretty similar to how we put the stain on. So I'll do the top and the breadboards, then the sides. After I have complete coverage on the table top, just like we did with that stain, we're going to start on one end of the table and pull that stain all the way across the entire length of the tabletop, overflowing into the breadboard, to which we will then go back over separately, again going with the grain on those breadboards. I swear every time I do a tabletop, it always seems like there's a random piece of string or fuzz or dust or something that gets in there. So if you notice anything, just like you see in this shot, grab a pair of tweezers and pull those out before it's dry. You can pull it out after it's dry, but it'll be much easier before that polyurethane settles up. So here's a look at the first coat the next day after it is dry. Now any discoloration that you see is actually because of the super high gloss reflection. 
But your first coat should essentially look something about like this. Now one thing you'll notice with the first coat is that there might be a lot of little teeny bubbles or pieces, something that looks like this that you can see I'm pointing out right here. So in order to get those out, we are going to sand the top of this down. And I like to use 400 grit sandpaper on a sander like this, something that you're actually doing by hand rather than a random orbital sander. The reason being that you want to use as little pressure as possible for this. In order to avoid sanding streak overflow into the breadboards, I'll put a piece of painter's tape down. That way that sander won't make any scratches on the breadboard. And at this point you may think that you are tearing the tabletop up, getting rid of that nice shiny finish. But that is okay because that is what is supposed to happen at this point. So here's a look at the difference between unsanded and sanded, and you will want to sand down that entire surface, again, to make sure that we get rid of all the bubbles before moving on to the next coat. Now before we do the next coat of polyurethane, we need to clean the top off with all that sanding dust. So I'm using mineral spirits on a paper towel here to clean the surface and wipe off all of that dust we made by sanding. This is an important step and you can see how much is on this side of the paper towel here. You can see my handprint rather than that clean side of the paper towel. So give any of the residual mineral spirits a little time to dry and completely disappear from the tabletop. Then we are going to repeat the previous step with the polyurethane to build up additional coats of the polyurethane before the final top coat, which we'll get to in a minute. It's really up to you at this point how many coats of polyurethane you would like to do on top. I recommend at least three, probably any more than four isn't really necessary, but you're going to do this process the exact same way that you did that first coat of poly, and you'll find out that each additional coat makes it look a little bit better than that last coat you did. So here's a closer look at the second coat, a substantial improvement from the first, and you repeat the process just like you did, sanding, mineral spirits in between, and then finally we'll move on to this very last coat, which is the wipe on poly. You do sand before this coat, just like we did on the other coats, and for applying this coat, I'll be using a cheesecloth, which you can see here. So the wipe on poly is shaken up before you use it, uh, mainly because it says to shake before use on the can. And then this is how I like to use the cheesecloth. So you want to get a flat surface in the palm of your hand, put that down in the puddle of polyurethane, and then you just wipe in one constant motion, kind of like we did with the stain. Once again, going with the grain. And this wipe on poly is quite a bit thinner than the brush on poly. So that's the advantage of using this as the very last step and the final top coat. It's very easy to put on and there is a much lower chance of getting bubbles with the wipe on finish. If your previous coat of the brush on polyurethane came out flawlessly, you can honestly skip this step because it wouldn't be necessary at this point. But at least in my experience, I've had excellent results using this wipe on polyurethane. And with it being so easy to use, I feel like it is the perfect final step for getting a good finish with poly. So now we just stay far away from the table and give it a chance to dry. Here is an up close look at the end result. Again, the discoloration is because of the rafters in my ceiling with that being a high gloss reflection, you can see that. But honestly, this is one of the best finishes that I've ever had. So I hope the information in this video was useful. So drop a comment down below, let me know what you think. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.